Hey, it's Joe Lines, and today I'm going to demonstrate a couple of um, additions I made to my syntax writer, my web scraping syntax writer. So, um, it's on the script is on my website, you can download it, but um, what it basically does is helps automate writing syntax. And so, I added a couple that I, I didn't have, I realized I didn't have in there. Um, and honestly, I, I hadn't even used them, um, the get attribute value stuff I hadn't used. So, let's say, here's an example, I'm on my website, and I wanted to um, look at this image and resize it or, or change an attribute that's there or just um, detect what size it is and uh, of course first I gotta know which image this is and so first off let's start off because because uh, I haven't actually done this so let's say get from page I'm gonna get um, let's see here I see there's no name I did I, the only thing I did was this basically there is no name there's no ID I'm looking here oh here's a class a line oh that that class might get me right there um, that's pretty... It, it's a thumbnail. I don't think I have any other thumbnails on here, so let's say here. So I'm going to come in here and say get from page, get class named array, dump that in here. Um, actually, I don't need that hierarchy right now. I'm going to say the f zero would be the first one, and give me the outer HTML. Now, oop, throw this in front of a message box save it, run it. Now basically, see this This says outer HTML here? This should be the same, right? And it sure looks like, here's the alt intro to web scraping, which is the alt text, right? If the images weren't displayed, that's what the, the letters, the words that would be there. So, let's say I wanted to know what that was, right? Um, the get elements by class name, by ID, this and that, those, those are great for getting values in outer HTML, inner HTML, but they don't return back the attributes. And so what I have done, so what I first needed was the location of where I where I was. Um, you know, I'm going to copy that, save it, and now, actually we're going to go, this gets me, you know, this is now basically a pointer right to this image, um, and then, although I'm, I'm going to, because I have not here, I think, with the full thing, so I'm going to say get from page, get attributes, right? So my example here, it's a full thing, so I'm just going to borrow this, Oops, well, I'll just overwrite the period, copy that out, so now it's going to get the attribute of type. I don't know if there is a type. It doesn't look like there is one. Let's save it, reload, run, and it's blank, right, because there is no type. But let's say the width. So it's 150. And see here how it's 150, or height obviously would be the same. Um, I could do class, I can do alt, let's do alt right intro to web scraping so that's how I can get the attributes of it or um, I can set them right so let's say I wanted to adjust the width to uh, I don't know 300 um, I think that's pixels I don't know I don't actually <laughs> build web pages um, so this is get attribute now I'm just going to show you here I have in here um, under set there are set attributes Right, but really, all it is, it's, it's changing the, the G to an S, right? So it's so I'm going to be lazy and just say set attribute, and of course, now you have to assign a value, right? So set attribute, we need to name it. That was the, uh, let's do the width. And it was 150. Let's make it 450. Save, reload. Um, and we don't want this in a message box. Oops. So, say really when I run it, theoretically this image is going to get much bigger. Oh, and there it goes, right? So I have dynamically adjusted the HTML on this page. My browser took that into account and made that larger. And of course I could come back in here and say, let's make it 50. Itty got itty bitty. Um, I hope the sound effects help. But, um... Of course, that's not actually paid changing what is, you know, on my server, right? That's changing my local version of it. However, if you just think about that, when if you constantly download things and you wanted them a certain size, you could go through and reset the images to be a bit bigger, right? And just write a script that would go grab... And actually, we could probably do that, just get a, a, a reference to all the image links, and then... Um, set the size to increase it by a certain amount. Read it and then increase it by a percentage is what I would probably do. Um, so that's the first one. So get and set attributes. You could also of course iterate over and look across all the elements, all the A, um, a inputs or the images and find 
use the attributes to find what you're looking for, right? So sometimes if you don't have a name or you don't have an ID, the attribute might be unique. Um, the value that is in there, you might be able to figure out, like, oh, that alt text, right? Intro to web scraping. Um, that's not a bad thing, especially inside of an image, um, to isolate that. That's probably right. And, and let me I'm going to reload this page just to show that I didn't actually mess up my server, right? It goes back to the original size when I reload it. So that is the first one I added to this. The second one, which um, is pretty cool, is uh, I uh, tables are pretty awesome. Um, and if you're trying to do some web scraping and data is in a table, um, like let's see, I have a couple examples here. I haven't actually tried this on this yet, but um, I'm going to demonstrate here how I can go in here and um, see it's TD, and I, that's what, ta table dimension? No. T yeah, I forget what it means. But if we if we look at the structure, you'll see TR is the row. Oh, come on, why are you not highlighting? That's weird. Usually that highlights for the, the whole row. TR is that row, and then there's a body, and then this is the table. Um, what I have done is in here, let's go ahead and get rid of all this. Now under get from page and get miscellaneous, I think, yeah. So get loop over table. This um, is not, hold on one second. I, I realized I had, um, I thought I had the wrong one because at first I had hard coded it and said, oh, you would go in and pick the table. But um, I, what I did was I looped over all the tables and I got a list of the, the number of tables on there, and I present it in a drop-down, and then you choose. It's just easier to show you, right? So let me save this, save it, reload it, launch it. Um, you know what? Now that did pick the, uh, I think that took the first one. So I realized that um, I, I hadn't actually updated my scriptwriter. I was working on it in this script over here. Um, testing it and I forgot to add it back into my actual syntax writer so now when I come in here and click this and say um, let's see get from page and where are we miscellaneous and get loop over table now this is going to bring in my syntax which will it does a couple things is it's going to um, first get a list of all the tables on the page and meaning just the number of them and of course there's zero index, so zero through however many. I'm going to add them to this list, and it builds a drop-down list, which I can select from. And that drop-down list will allow me to pick and choose which one, all that's doing in here, so all this fancy stuff up in here is changing this number between zero if there's one, of course there could be none, um, but it's zero to however many tables. And then whichever table it's on, it's going to loop over them, so this first I get the length of the rows in the table, and then I start looping over it, um, and then I get the uh, cells, so for each um, row, I loop over the cells in it, and I used to use the TD, and the cells just seemed a little bit easier to, to keep in your mind instead of using the, the TD input tag. And from that, I um, I dump it into an object. Actually, Maestri has helped me with this, and I say help, he actually rewrote it for me, because I was trying to dump it into a list view, a dynamic, and so here you can see this is a, a variadic um, function. It takes variadic variables where it, it can take any number of variables. It'll just change, and um, it can change, I should say. And so what it does is just, let me, let me save this, and I'm going to reload it and run it. And so on this first page, there's just one table. Um, and the second, I, let me go back to here. The second I select it, it goes and grabs that table and extracts the inner text and dumps it into a list view, which is nice. Um, list views also, I can I can sort, I can grab by these things and sort, right? Um, I could build it where I could double click it and have it copied to my clipboard and whatever, but uh, I haven't done that. Uh, but it, it's just pretty cool. And if there were more, let's go to one who like this Capel, this is my weather, local weather, um, and in here when I, you'll see there's, um, there, this I believe, you know what, let me demonstrate that, let me pull up my tool, and here's how I, I can see it, right, I can see one, this is TD, which is, I think that's table data, if I remember right, but it's basically a cell, and if I show the parent structure, 
I can see here's the row, right? So you can see that row gets highlighted in their body, and here's that table. Um, what you don't see because this is just a hierarchy and there's other things under other branches is that on this page, um, let me reload my script and launch it. Now here, you see there's a lot of tables, right? There's actually um, 12 tables because it's zero based, right? So if I say let's get um, the second one, which is number one, um, it, it is probably, often they're, you know, somewhat starting at the top. Let's see, visibility clouds, uh, visibility, 16.1 kilometers, there we go, pressure, um, that is grabbing from here. If, um, if I was to take the, uh, third, um, so it's just pulling from different things up there, right? I, I didn't build in a way to possibly grab, I guess, like a strong label around it to help, but, you know, who cares? Um, the, this major one down here is like the, it's near the bottom. I forget if it's the very last one. Ah, look at that, it is. And so it just grabbed all that for me, dumped it in there. Um, again, I can sort these however I want. Um, and, uh, this allows me to quickly display, regardless of how many columns there are, or rows, uh, display the data. Let me see, oh, here's baseball standings. Um, so on here, oh look, wow, there's a lot of tables. Let's see if it sets the first one. Looks like it is. Yep. Well, let's see if, uh, what happens if I pick the next one. Then east. AL east, that looks like that should have been it. Let's, um, let's try this one. And zero is that. Huh. So I, I don't know why these other ones aren't there, but let's go ahead and go to this um, this one, which which I think has a lot more data on it. Um, and oh, look, there's only two tables apparently. So that just grabbed that one. Interesting. And let's grab the next one. Um, I'm not actually looking at the data, but you can see how how convenient it is to not have to go through and calculate how many rows and how many columns and what it looks like, right? That, that's why I thought, you know what, I'm going to throw this into that tool because even though you're probably going to only want certain things out of it, right? You don't want everything like this. But this should be pretty easy even though you wouldn't be using this necessarily. The grabbing of it, let's see, where is it? Right here, where it's, this is saying get the inner text, right? If you want to change that to href, it would get these look like hyperlinks. It would get those. Um, and then you could change it to say, okay, just iterate over the first um, this. You wouldn't iterate over all of the columns, right? All of the cells, because the cells are going this way, right? So you'd probably do, maybe it's the second one. That P might, that one might be on its own. Let's, let's get the tool here real quick. And, oh, wrong tool. Um, let's see if we can just see if those are separate. So, oh, oh yeah, so see that is a separate thing, and that those are probably in different cells. And so you probably want the second cell um, if you wanted the hyperlinks. And uh, anyway, it's a pretty cool and easy way to iterate over tables. Thanks.